Hello, this is your host, Danny B, or Yurigashi, whichever one you prefer to call me, and today I am going to be covering .mu's Iram Arcade Hits Collection. You can buy this from their website at .mu.com, and it costs, I believe, just under 10 euros, which, for 18 games, is actually pretty good. Um, like, for 10 euros on the virtual console, that might buy you Altered Beast, or something, or... On Xbox Live, that might buy you a remake. But here you're getting 18 DRM free arcade games, I guess. It comes with most of the options that you'd expect the regular main emulator to have other than online play. The only problem with this collection being that, well, you can only play the worldwide editions and not the Japanese version of games, which affects certain games which I'll go into later. Anyway, um,. I'm going to do a review of each of the games now, although this is only the first part of the collection, so this is the first 9 games out of 18. These reviews are generally shorter and to more to the point, but at the same time I think they should give you a feel of what the games are actually like. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Air Duel, despite having what I consider to be one of the most badass names in video gaming history is hardly even heard of by most people. It was released in the arcades in 1990 and unlike Iram's other shoot 'em up franchise, R-Type, this game is not very well known. It's a fairly standard shoot 'em up really. You collect power-ups with power up your main gun, and then you collect bombs which you can use to bomb enemies. That's pretty much it. The only really innovative thing about this game is, well, you can control the direction of the bomb by pressing left or right after you've fired it, and between missions you get the choice of either being a helicopter or an airplane. The difference between a helicopter and the airplane is the airplane will always shoot straight forward, while the helicopter will change its shooting trajectory left or right depending on if you move the joystick left or right. It can be kind of a nuisance to control the helicopters, but people who actually master the use of the helicopter can actually get through certain stages of this game with relative ease, which is a blessing, let me tell you, because on the later stages, this game is absolutely brutal, and if you die once, you're fucked. Kind of like Gradius, really. Or any other shoot 'em up at that time period, for that matter. One good tip about enjoying this game actually is make sure you enable the auto fire button. Normally I wouldn't suggest doing this, but for this game I'd make an exception. After a few rounds my hands were absolutely knackered after whacking that fire button so much. And the reason for this is a lot of the enemies are actually pretty damn tough. And well, you kinda need to be able to fire really really quickly. And the levels are pretty long too, I mean what you're seeing here is basically just stage 1. And it's pretty darn long. So for maximum comfort, I would strongly suggest enabling that auto fire button. Like many of the Iram shooters in the past, Air Duel also has giant ass bosses, and well, this is the first level boss, he's not too bad, although I do bite it towards the end, god knows why. Overall I'd say I really do like the presentation of this game, although the sound isn't its strongest point, the graphics do give off this nice post apocalyptic vibe which the Rams seem to love doing back in the early 90s seem to be their thing, their style. It was very evident in other games that they did, like Undercover Cops for example. Here you're going to see me play as the helicopter, which I absolutely suck with, so... Enjoy me dying a lot, I guess. As you can see, um, the helicopter's bullets refuse to stay in a single line. They go everywhere depending which direction you press the uh, joystick, and it can actually be quite useful at times. Anyway, um, time for the score. I would probably give this game a 7 out of 10. 
It's basic gameplay. I kind of like. Some shoot 'em ups tend to be really, really complex with the scoring systems and stuff. I just like the fact that you can power up my ship and I get to blow up stuff. And the graphics are nice, the enemies are kind of interesting. The levels are kind of a bit too long, but overall, I do find myself enjoying this game. I never quite understood this intro, it always cracks me up. Why does he need to fly to the right, then to the left, then fly back into the centre, then drive off? I have no idea. Anyway, this is known as Mr. Heli, or in this collection, Battle Chopper. Despite the fact that I've barely played this game, this is actually one of the around's more popular franchises. This actually was released on a whole bunch of home consoles. Well, actually, that's a lie. It was only released on the PC Engine exclusively by Irem in uh, Japan, but home computers, the Atari ST, the Vega, the Spectrum, the Commodore 64, those type of things, all got ports of Mr. Heli. This is obviously the arcade version since we're playing the Irem Arcade Hit Collection, and this is actually a very fun game, although it's also very, very difficult, especially if you're just getting into it. The objective of this game, just like any normal shoot 'em up, is fly to the end of the level and kill the boss. But what makes this game unique is, well, it's not auto scrolling for a start, you have control of the, the pace of the game, and also, well, there's a weird bombing slash missile mechanic. You press fire button 1, you fire out your gun. You press fire button 2, depending if you're in the air or actually on the ground, you plant bombs. And the bombing actually took me a while to get used to because I thought you, like there was some kind of button combination that you needed to press. But at the end of the day, all you need to do is be actually stationary on the ground and you're good. Another good thing about this game is you can upgrade your helicopter using crystals. Each crystal is worth a certain amount of money and once you get a certain amount of money, the power-ups that you uncover by blasting the bricks will light up. Go into it, you spend your money, and you get the new power-up. This adds a level of strategy to the game that's missing from a lot of other shoot 'em ups actually. And it's not so complicated that it's going to bog you down, but at the same time, it does have a little bit of depth to the game too. In that respect, this this game does actually remind me of Fantasy Zone, but you can't scroll backwards like you can in Fantasy Zone. Anyway, the um, graphics and sound are very, very nice in this game. The controls are nice and tight. The difficulty is tough, like I mentioned before. Um, it's going to definitely take you a couple of tries to get actually good at the game. But overall, this game is definitely worth checking out. And gets a solid 8 out of 10 from me. Oh, and before I forget, this game's actually available on Virtual Console um, for the same price as this entire collection. So, if you have a choice between the two, I'd say definitely get the year um, Arcade Hits collection as it's better value for money, basically. Especially if you want to play Mr. Heli. This is Blade Master, released in 1991 in the arcade, and you get the choice of Roy or Arnold. Roy or Arnold? Yeah, clearly I'm gonna go with the big guy that's called Arnold. While the storyline is very stock in this game, you do notice off the bat that this game actually has some nice graphics, especially for 1991 standards. In fact, the whole presentation of this game is actually done very well. The graphics are very nice, the backgrounds are well done, have parallax scrolling, the animation's very nice. But there's one problem. As you know that scrolling beat em ups are all about mashing the A button, and sometimes some of them do interesting things to mix it up. This game, no such thing. No combos, no super special moves as such. I mean, you can press down and attack while jumping in the air to do some kind of splash move, but other than that, all you're gonna do is the same boring poke out your stick thing and hit people throughout the entire game, from what I can tell. I got pretty far in this game until I decided to stop, because I'm gonna be honest, this game didn't hold my attention for that long. 
and I love scrolling beat em ups. Hell, me and my brothers have actually gone through Guardians of the Hood, arguably one of the shittest arcade games ever released. And it was slightly more interesting than this. Although one thing that Blade Master does have going for it is huge, huge bosses and interesting enemy design actually. Now I'm not going to spoil all the bosses for you because, well that's kind of the only draw of the game. I just really wish that the combat was just more interesting, even by scrolling beat em up standards. I jumped to the head a little here because I actually really wanted you guys to see the boss and, well, it's just an entire stage of beating the same three types of enemies over and over again. Everything's just so well animated. Look when I destroy the pots again. Look how they just break. You can tell that a lot of care and attention was put into this game by some graphic designers and the backgrounds, again, look lovely. As you can no doubt probably tell by the random change in music, this is a boss fight. And like most around boss fights, they tend to be rather big, although this one's actually kind of small by comparison. Although because this guy's actually the first level boss, he's also incredibly, incredibly fucking stupid. You could just walk up to him and keep punching him, or you could just stay just out of his range and keep doing the jumping down attack move and that will kill him. Overall, I'd say this is a fairly average game. I'd give it 5 out of 10. Um, it's not bad, but it could be a lot better as well. Certainly not what I would call the worst game on the collection, that's for sure. Right then, this is Cosmic Cop. Um, this one's kind of a strange one. I kind of both love and hate this game at the same time. I love its aesthetics, its post-apocalyptic world, how you sign into this thing here, look, every time you type in your name, more bits of the lights flashing. This game has a lot of style, a lot of class. At the same time, there's a lot of things that stop it from being a truly great shoot em up. First of all though, let's have a look at the gameplay. Cosmic Cop is essentially a side-scrolling shooter, as you can no doubt probably tell. It has some pretty interesting mechanics. A button shoots, B button fires your laser which homes it into enemies and kills them over time, but you can only use it for a certain period of time before your laser bug drains completely and you have to wait until it fills back up again. Um, the graphics are big and detailed and very very nice looking, the backgrounds are okay, they're not great, but that's the problem with this game, the graphics are big and detailed, your ship is humongous, dodging stuff on this game can be a real pain, they're not throwing really difficult bullet patterns at you or anything, it's just, your ship is about as big as the Hindenburg, dodging stuff becomes almost impossible and you need to use abuse your laser quite a lot. I skipped ahead there because well I did eventually get past that part but after like a gazillion tries. Again this game has some nice graphics but it also suffers from slowdown because it d tries to do too much at, at once. What you're about to see here is a boss battle. It's the first boss in the game and he's not too bad. He's pretty easy to take out, although from my personal experience, he's probably the only easy boss in the entire game. I mean, they let you off on a freebie on this one because some of the later bosses are a massive pain in the ass, especially with your big ass ship. As you can no doubt probably tell, but this game was actually made by the same guys who did R-Type. I don't mean O Iram, I actually mean the same development team that made R-Type also made this game. I love these bits here, I'm not sure why, because <laughs> it's, just them, it's just them giving you the score. Oh man, my time is embarrassing. That's actually one thing about Cosmic Cop, it actually ranks you on your time that you get through the level and since I died quite a bit there because I don't really play this game all that much, my time was pretty poor. Next one level is in fact the sewer and you see what I mean by the background. They're okay, 
nothing special really it was just a nice parallax scrolling and you so there's dropping poo all over me coming to think of it most adventure and first person shoot em up games have a sewer level well so does this game now so I guess that makes this game kind of generic I suppose anyway if I was going to rate cosmic cough I'd give it a 6 out of 10 it's okay but Unfortunately, the massive, massive ship size kind of really does it for me. I find it really, really difficult to dodge stuff because your hitbox is so, so massive. But it has some nice aesthetics and I really like some of the enemy designs in this game. So check it out if you like shooters. Atari SD and Commodore Amiga fans might remember this, this is Dragon Breed. One of those other shoot 'em ups that Iran did that, well, I wouldn't say it's as popular as our type, but this, this is certainly one of the high points of their resume, so to speak. This intro, in fact, informs you that you're basically in for a good time. You're a squishy water type that jumps onto a giant Chinese dragon. <laughs> and decides to go around shooting everything he sees to save the earth. You go guy, you go. Anyway, all joking aside, this game is probably one of your own best games. As you can see it has a pretty unique theme for the time. I mean there was only dragon spirit before this and that was a vertical shooter goddammit. And well the graphics are nice and big and detailed and the soundtrack is rocking and... Rocking? Did you just say that? Yeah, okay, the soundtrack is good and the gameplay for the most part is fair, although it does suffer from one problem in my opinion. As you can see, the graphics are not too big, which means to fit everything on screen they basically had to make the game scrolling vertically as well as horizontally, which means sometimes you can get shot by see things you basically only made aware of two seconds in advance because you move up on the screen and oh shit there's a ton of enemies there. But much like your own other shoot ups this is mainly based on memorization and not on reflex so if you're going to want to try and one cc this you're probably going to want to at least take a few stabs at it because you're not going to remember everything that this game throws at you first time round. let's put it that way. I'd also like to point out that there's a uh, charging shot system just like our type and you can collect little vials of power-ups which change what breath your dragon has. This can be electric, thunder, wind, that kind of thing. And it's pretty crazy, I mean this is the thunder one right here and it basically turns your dragon into a massive spread shot machine, which is awesome. The boss is also nice and big too. Um, Unfortunately, I forget how to defeat this thing, so you don't see me kill it. <laughs> but overall, I'd give Dragon Breed about 9 out of 10. I'd easily one of my favourite in-round games. This is well worth checking out, so make sure you do. Gun Force is actually quite an amazing game. Um, this game was actually developed by the same team who did the Metal Slug series um, before they all left Iran basically. This is more of a Contra style game as opposed to Metal Slug because this game is a lot older. Um, the game itself plays as you'd expect the Contra game to play like but with one added difference. Vehicles! That's right you get to pilot a whole host of vehicles and look how lazy I am here I, I drive that jeep for about two meters and then I jump into a helicopter hey get down here you motherfucker what sorry I can't hear you in this giant ass helicopter <laughs> yeah but this game is actually really enjoyable if a little, it's a little bit stiff and the levels can be very very unforgiving this is a very hard game but again Contra games were back in the day so you know you just have to roll with it I guess 
Although, there's always one boss which is basically just like a fortified fucking building, isn't there, with big fuck me lights on it, but what could he do? The graphics look nice, the sound is pretty cool, the weapons are pretty, well, they're pretty stock really, but at the same time, they're fun to use, you know, like, I don't think this game has the spread, the fabled spread shot though, although I've not seen it yet. So that's, that may be the reason why this game's slightly tougher than Contra. Mission complete! I have crushed the enemy front base. I will head for the enemy supply depot with my stupid goofy goggles. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, if I was going to rate this game, I'd probably give it 8 out of 10. Um, and there's a reason why I'm only giving this game 8 out of 10. It's because of the next game in this collection. Right then, this is Gun Force 2, and I'm just going to say this straight off the bat, this game's getting a 10, because I fucking love it so much. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm entering my name so slowly, it's because I really like this music. <laughs> but yeah, um... Gun Force 2, it's like Gun Force 1, but more Metal Slug. In fact, fans of Metal Slug often consider this to be Metal Slug Zero, because... Well, just look at it! Isn't that screen Metal Slug to you? Look at all these explosions! <laughs> Actually, that's one of my only criticisms about this game. Like, sometimes there's so much shit going on the screen that, like, a stray bullet can hit you and you wouldn't even know. Um, but yeah, this game's absolutely crazy. You're a guy that goes around with two assault rifles, one in each hand, and shoots everything that you see. Um, there are more vehicles, the stages are much longer, the graphics are nicer, the music is much, much better. And there isn't really that much else I can say about this game, but this game is fantastic. Um, the level design is much, much better as well. The boss design, considerably better as well. Look at this transition. That's awesome. Much like the old Metal Slug games and stuff, you can actually collect additional weapons. Um, because you can hold two weapons at a time, it means you don't have to compromise in like range and power. You can like have a fast throwing machine gun and a bazooka or a flamethrower or some kind of crazy ass acid spread shot, which is what I've got in the moment, and yeah, like, just the amount of detail and animation in everything, it's, you can, you can tell that this was done by the same team that did Metal Slug. <laughs> Look at this! Like, just the amount of charm and personality that this game has, it's, and this music is awesome as well. So yeah, you're about to see the start of another trope of the Metal Slug series, crazy ass vehicles. And yeah, they've really, really upped it from like the previous Gun Force game. Like before you just have like this massive ass like helicopter that would just get hit by everything. But in this game, the vehicles are very well animated, they're very well designed, and they do feel and look different from each other as well. And oh, I just love this game so much. Like, just look at it! How could you not enjoy playing this game? <laughs> and that's the really weird thing about Iran. This is like one of the games that nobody knows about. Like, it's weird. I mean, fans of Metal Slug may have hunted this game down, maybe, but... Like, most people when you say Iran, they think either Kung Fu Master or R-Type. Or Dragon Breed, if you're lucky. But, this game like rarely ever gets mentioned and that's a crying shame because this is easily one of the best arcade games I've ever played. It just has so much detail and look at that! I mean just look at it! You can shoot individual parts of a train and the forest is on fire and it's all crazy and look at this boss! You can just tell that everything is just a massive massive step up. It's gorgeous to look at as well. 
the boss pet, the bosses, are, they actually put some effort into these bosses. They have multiple forms, multiple attacks. They're not just like a simple, like, you know, spread shot thing or like, you know, a couple of guys hanging out in the window when a turret comes by and shoots at you. This is, this is proper game design here. And hardly anybody knows about this. It's a crying, crying shame. So, yeah, um, like I said before, this game got a 10 out of 10. I really happen to like this game. This game probably makes the collection entirely worth it just on its own. And yet you're getting 17 other games with it. So I strongly suggest you check this game out. Even if you don't buy the collection. Even if you just want to, you know, check it out on main or whatever do it because this game is fantastic and I think it deserves more credit than it actually gets. Alright, this is another one of my favourites, Hammering Harry. Um, this series not that popular in the West but a big deal in Japan. Hell, there was even a re-release on the PSP that happened quite recently. Ju a guy called Jude Wario covered it. If you don't know who he is, Google him because he's freaking awesome. So yeah, um, there have actually been multiple entries of this in Japan. We've only ever received three games. The Game Boy game, the NES port of this, and well, this game. Japan have had like at least about eight or nine titles. So, you know, we've actually missed a lot of Hammering Harry games, although how I discovered this game was in an old seaside arcade in Weymouth, and I've been in love with the game and the series ever since. I mean, Irem were renowned for their shooters at the time, and to see this come out from them was actually a breath of fresh air, to be honest. As you can no doubt probably tell, this game has a lot of personality and charm to it, and some MC Hammer quotes, if you could call them that anyway. But yeah, the levels, they're very well designed, the enemies are well designed, the graphical presentation and sound are very well done, the game's very well animated. The levels aren't too cheap. This is the thing I like about this game, the actual gameplay is solid. It's a solid arcade platforming game. Most of them, like say, especially the really early ones like Magician Lord and stuff, very very cheap. I didn't like them, like, Magician Lord was basically a bullet hell shoot em up crossed with a freaking platforming game with slapdash level design. I could probably design better levels from click and play within two minutes than they could have in that game because it was just fucking crazy. But as you can see this game actually has you know puzzles, it has like tactics of beating bosses and stuff. It's not unfair, you can actually easily beat the game on one credit if you dedicate enough time to it because the game is not cheap. <laughs> I love that for catchphrase. Let's get busy! That's so 90s. But I might have to make that my unofficial catchphrase for my reviews from now on. Just throw that out there at the beginning of every review, just see what people think. <laughs> anyway, yeah, as I'm saying, this is like the puzzle element I was talking about. You have to actually kind of be a bit smart and take your time. And that's good because it mixes things up a bit in my opinion. There isn't really that much else I can say about this game other than go check it out. This is easily one of the best games on the collection and I would easily give this game 9 out of 10. Definitely worth checking out. Even if you're not really a fan of platformers, I strongly suggest checking this one out because it's a good platform. It's one of the rare good arcade platformers. But it doesn't get ridiculously cheap and is really really fun to play with some great graphics and sound. Image Fight. Quite possibly one of the weirdest things for a video game ever. This is supposedly supposed to be based on a 
futuristic flight simulator where you go around shooting at hard light projectiles and stuff like that. It's absolutely weird storyline wise, but gameplay wise this is a pretty standard shoot em up. The first button shoots, the second button changes the speed of your craft so you can either move really quick or slow. Unfortunately, like, switching between fast and slow can be a bit troublesome, especially since there's only one button for it. A bit weird, I know. But other than that, this is effectively a really well done, if incredibly challenging, vertical shooting up by your arm. Um, what else can I say, really? Oh, you do get little modules and stuff on the side of your ship. Uh, you can have up to three on there at once, and a front weapon which changes your shot type. And the enemies all have very interesting bullet patterns and stuff. It's a very well designed game. It's very, very tough, so don't expect to like one CC this on your first try. But overall, I really come to quite like this game. Like the graphics and sound are very well done, the ships are well designed. Although some of them, like that little homing missile guy, can fuck off, that's for sure. But, other than that, this is a very, very nice game. If you're wondering what happened there, basically I decided to skip forward a few places just to show you guys some of the better weapons, and also because I want you, really want to show you the boss. Because I really didn't want to leave this game without actually showing you guys at least one of the bosses of this game, so... And there's those interesting bullet patterns that I was telling you about. I initially I thought that red orb on the side was pretty crap, but like it becomes incredibly useful later on in the game. And here's the first boss, he has some very very interesting circular bullet patterns as you can see. He's very generally well animated, if a little generic as a boss, but Overall, I would give this game 8 out of 10. It's a solid, solid shoot em up that's worth checking out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was the end of part 1. Part 2 should be hopefully coming soon. I'll see you guys later. Bye!